What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I've got a box, and if you're wondering what's in said box, you're in the right place because I'm going to be taking things out and showing you exactly what I got. Now, this is a little bit of a delayed episode. Some of the things in here are from Tackle Warehouse. I ordered like a month ago. You know, of course, they're a couple weeks delayed because of short on staff and stuff, but it ended up getting lost in the mail, and I was upset. I thought I was going to have to flatten some noses. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. It got to me, but it's about a month late, so some of the stuff was kind of cold water things. Don't know if I really get to use them now, but still cool stuff and I wanted to show you. The other stuff in here is from a different place, a place I've never ordered from. It's called The Hookup Tackle. A couple of my buddies tagged me and said, hey, you need to check out their, their store. They run specials and stuff on Instagram. I'd never heard of them, so I thought, you know what, I'll check it out. When I got on there, I noticed they had something, a little bit different stuff from Tackle Warehouse. They had a number of JDM things, and I usually don't get too into the JDM stuff. You know, there's kind of this underground following. A lot of people love the JDM stuff. Never really got into it, but in JDM, if you don't know, is for the Japanese domestic market. Usually things that are only offered only, uh, you know, overseas in Japan. Different offerings than we get here. The first one is just that. This is the first reel that I have ever paid full price for. And it's the Shimano Scorpion. To be exact, it's the Shimano Scorpion MGL. This is the 151 HG, a 74 to 1 retrieve reel. I saw it on there. I've heard of people talk about the Scorpion. I thought, you know what, to heck with it. I'm going to try one. I've never owned one. Um, I've never spent that much in a reel. I always wait to get my reels on sale, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to get one to try it so we can compare this to kind of some of the lower end things, the mid-grade stuff, and just kind of see where it runs and in, in all the gambit of stuff. And I'll tell you what, this reel is, uh, it's pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. It's out because I've been out using it. I threw it on that Lose Custom Speed Stick. And this combo has been pretty sweet. I was throwing it the other night with a little swim bait. Dude, this thing casts a mile. A scorpion. So far, I'm pretty darn impressed with it. It's smooth. Uh, one of the big things they talk about is casting distance and the ease of castability with this sort of reel. So far, I am seeing just that. I also just saw that. I didn't even notice that on the spool tension knob. They got the the whole scorpion emblem thing going on there. That's kind of cool. So I'll keep throwing this. We'll keep doing some testing on it and see. You know, is it worth spending more on a reel like this? Um, and I'm a big fan of the reels right around 100 bucks. I think that's where you get the most bang for your buck. Um, but I'm using some of the other things a little bit up from there. And maybe I'll try to find some stuff, you know, close to that 50, 60 dollar range for folks. So just trying out a few different things. I thought this was neat. I've never owned a JDM reel. So that's the first one, the Shimano Scorpion MGL. All right, let's start out with some crankbaits, some six cent stuff. These were some flat sided crankbaits I wanted to get for the cold water. You know, around here, good old Iowa, the spring seems to last forever. And we keep still getting cold fronts that keep moving in. But a flat sided crankbait is great in cold water. A little bit tighter wobble. These have kind of a little bit of a roll to them, I guess you'd say. Um, you know, instead of the real wild, crazy action of a square bill, you know, usually as the water warms up, that's what the fish wants. So this is closer to that lipless, you know, a little bit tighter wobble, a little bit different look to it. But um, I don't really have many of these. I've got some of the other stuff that's in here a couple, but these are a little bit bigger. I like the colors on them. That's the one they call Jaint Juice. You know, it's a, it's a Jaint. Giant. So this Crush 75X, that's the color of Shad Scales. You can see there it's got the kind of reflective scales. Six Sense does a great job at painting. You know, now that I've been doing my own custom painting and such, I pay a little bit more attention to paint jobs and stuff, like how easy is this? Uh, is this something that, you know, people can replicate? Um, and the colors on these are really neat. They have some really cool colorways, Six Sense, some of the, the best stuff on the market. And the nice thing about theirs is you don't have to replace their hooks or anything. So, so far, everything that I've tried of theirs runs true. The hooks are good. You don't have to replace anything. So probably going to be adding some more Six Sense stuff. And that color there is the wild lava crawfish. Pretty cool, red and orange. I grabbed a baby bluegill. I really like the looks of that one. That baby bluegill is neat. Should do good in the Iowa ponds and such around here. And finally, I grabbed another classic chartreuse blackback. Great for muddy, dirty water around here in the Midwest. So that's it, the Crush 75X, the flat-sided, kind of a square billish crankbait. They died to about five feet. So we're gonna put those to use. Hopefully still, I'm gonna try to see if I can get some bites on them, but. It's getting to be square bill season around here, so we'll see. We'll try to throw those. Now, keeping with the Sixth Sense theme, the Provoke 106X. Now, if you all just saw my recent video, I tore them up on this. This is in, uh, what's color? 4K Shad. 4K Shad is that color right there. Kind of a white minnow. It's got some holographic iridescent kind of purple on there and gold. Super cool color overall. It killed it in a little lake here that I fish a lot. I really liked it. It suspends well. Again, the, the, te the terminal tackle on it, the hooks. You don't have to change anything. That's kind of one of my frustrations, especially 
on a suspending jerk bait because when you switch hooks out they might have it tuned to those hooks but if they're kind of grummy stock hooks and you change them out if you go too high or too low in weight it's either going to float or it's going to sink so i like that that they do have those um, all ready to go you don't have to change anything and it's suspended well so um, I've got a couple other of these colors around here. I don't know what I did with them, but the Sixth Sense Provoke, I really like that jerkbait. Now let's just stick with that jerkbait thing. Ima, I got some of these from the Hookup Tackle. Ima, I don't really ever use any of their stuff. I've never tried anything, so I ordered a couple things. This is the Flip. They come in a couple different sizes. That's the larger size there. What is it, 120? Yeah, the 120 size, and there's like a 90 something. What is it? Yeah, the smaller 100 is 3 eighths of an ounce. The larger 120 is half an ounce, so four and a half inches half ounce smaller 100 3.9 inches 3 eighths of an ounce so you can see there i got the smaller size there that's in like a ghost what do they call it ghost minnow is what they call it kind of that see-through transparent good for those clean water days not a lot of overcast sunshine clean clear water something transparent like that usually does really well now when that cloud cover comes out in the daytime i like to go to a little bit more solid color that's called the Bone Shad. So you can see white there. It's got a little bit of orange on the belly, but a really cool color. I got a couple of different ones of these. Some I already have in my tackle box, um, but the I'm a Flit. I really like those. I did get to test them out. They work well, suspend well, they cast well. So I'm going to try to use those still. We've got another kind of cold front coming through. So going to try to use these, see if we can get some more jerkbait fish. Um, terminal tackle and everything on them seem to be good. So we're going to see what those do. Oh, diving depth. Smaller 100 size, 3 to 8 feet. The larger 120 size, six to eight feet. Remember, you can control that with your line too. So the higher you go up in line, let's say you're using fluorocarbon, the higher you go up in line weight, the less they're gonna dive down. So if you go to a 10 pound line, you're gonna get it way deeper than if you use a 17 pound line on this. So remember that. Okay, let's just stick with that IMA stuff. The IMA square bill. Um, I got these for the shallow ponds. Uh, some of the lakes around here uh, are gonna be getting grass really soon. And once they come up with all that grass and stuff, you can't use a lot of the treble hook baits, but What's nice about this is it's a shallow diver. In fact, it says runs three feet on 12 pound line and only two feet on 15 pound line. Usually I throw my square bills on 15 pound line unless I'm going up to a bigger 2.5. I might even use 17. When you're around a bunch of thick wooden stuff, the line's not for the lure, it's for all that cover you're around. If you get around a bunch of wooden stuff and I've got 10 pound line, good chance I'm snapping it. So that's a closer look at that I'm a square bill. That's in the bluegill color. Very neat colors on it. You can see there's got that circuit board, small lip, so it's not going to dive very far. Very neat colors on it. Very cool looking bait overall. So like I said, I don't have much experience with the I'm a stuff. Going to try a few of their things. I also got like a sexy shad color and I think uh, like a regular shadish color on there, you know, regular bait fish. So couple of those to try. We'll see how they do in the shallow ponds and stuff with grass. Keeping with that crankbait theme, the, uh, the flat-sided crankbaits that I was talking about earlier that I do have are those. The Spro Little John 50s. Half ounce. Great little flat-sided crankbait. I've used these before. That's in the root beer color. White with some light brown on it and chartreuse. I also got, I think, a, a chartreuse black back, a shad color, then also a red craw there. So great little crankbait. I know they are a little bit more. These I ended up getting on sale, I think, for like six bucks a piece, but um, I know they do run a little bit more, I think like eight bucks or something regularly, but try to find sales, try to grab a few when you can. But uh, those are great shallow diving, flat sided crankbaits. So when you're targeting those colder water fish that aren't starting to move up, a little flat sided crank like that is nice. Okay, let's just stay with the uh, the treble hook lures and it is another jerk bait. The Smithwick Rogue Junior. These guys are just a little over four inches, five sixteenth weight, and they suspend. Suspend down to about six feet. So Smithwick, I had to grab them. You know, the old guys out there are gonna remember a lot of the Smithwick jerk baits and stuff. Um, the Rogues, great little jerk bait. They suspend well. They don't cost a lot either. Um, I usually replace the hardware on it. Um, I like some little bit different hooks, but old school. I saw they came out with the junior size. I don't remember seeing a smaller size like this. Usually a little bit bigger. So. Decided to grab those in a chrome color, found those on sale. So the Smithwick Rogue, suspending jerkbait, the junior size. Let's see, how about a couple pins? Uh, on the hookup tackle, when you get, I think I spent, you know, what, 200 bucks or whatever on that order. When you get over a certain amount, they give you like deals where you can get extra percentage off on certain things. And one of those things was the spike it pins. Nothing crazy, you probably all have seen these, but I grabbed a blue, I think a red and a black. And they were like two bucks for a two pack, so I figured why not, but... Essentially, it's just a pin, you know, like the dip and glow stuff. Spike it, you dip in the chartreuse. This is just a pin version. I like that for my tackle bag because I do not want one of those spike it's breaking open in my bag and stinking everything up. I've had it happen. It's not pleasant. You can see there, it's just like a little, uh, you know, permanent marker or whatever. You can color on there. This happens to be blue. 
So if you had a, a green pumpkin, um, you know, like flipping bait or, or the chunk trailer on a jig or something, you can color it red, blue, chartreuse, whatever you want, and dye the tips of that to give it a little bit different look. I also got black. Why black, you say? Well, when you're using green braid, after a while, that dark green braid tends to get kind of a whitish, real light green. You take, some people just use a permanent marker, but I figured, why not? Add a little crawfish scent to it. This is black, so I can color that, you know, maybe within a couple feet of my frog or whatever lure you're using on your blade. Blade? Braid? Color it black, so hopefully it doesn't stand out as much as that white line. So black, blue, and I think I got a red, something like that. But anyway, the spike it marker is just an alternative to actually dipping your lures. Okay, I've got some finesse jigs in here. This is going to be the next video you're going to see coming up. Uh, Rand Dizzler and I are out on a little adventure. We end up finding some fish. I was using a, a spinnerbait, but I caught my bigger fish on this. And this is the brand new jig from Beast Coast. This is called the Hustler Hybrid Finesse Jig. I ordered a few different colors of these. The 5 16 ounce jig has soon become my favorite size to use. I used to use a 3 8 I've been experimenting with 5 16 this year. I love it. It's a perfect size for bank fishing. You know, you want to try to drop down to a 5 16 even a quarter. I got some quarter stuff I want to start trying, but lighter is better around rocks from the bank. You have to remember you're working uphill. I'm flipping out there and I'm working that up the rocks up to me. It's not like fishing from a boat where I throw up there shallow and I'm bouncing it down the rocks out to me. You get hung up so much more when you're fishing from the bank with a heavier jig. So these guys, I really liked them. I caught a couple really good fish on that trip. That's what the little dudes look like up close. Beautiful colors. They have those uh, strands in there, kind of like that flashaboo or whatever they call it. Got a very uh, reflective kind of look to it, but it's also got the hair on it. It's like a mix between a regular finesse jig and a hair jig. And I tell you what, all that those little hairs in the water... It looks like little tentacles, antenna, you know, just the water's moving and that hair is just doo -doo 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 -doo. very cool. I've not seen a hybrid jig like this, you know, finesse jig mixed with hair. Maybe companies have done it before, but man, absolutely love those. Ordered a few different colors of them and I am a huge fan. In fact, in that video you're going to see coming up, this was the color I was using and I love this around here. We've got a lot of the blue craws here in Iowa and this mimics that looks awesome. This color here is called Elite Craw. That's the trailer I was using. Again, those Reaction Innovation Smalley Beavers in the red. What do they call it? Magic Craw Red. That's what that finesse jig looks like. So that whole thing together, you've got hair on it. You've got Flashaboo giving it a little bit of a flash. you got the blue. I tell you what, this thing looked amazing. Huge fan of it. Caught my two biggest fish of the day on that little rig right there. Just a little finesse jig. Super cool rig. So got those. That first color craw that I show you, that orange and kind of greenish, that's called their Elite Craw. This color is called Dirt Bag for when those craws get a little bit darker. Look at that. Black and brown. Great color and, you know, dirty water just to make a good outline for them. Like that color a lot. And the final color there, Pro Pumpkin. You can see there, pretty natural color, pretty light, green pumpkin, and that brown hair jig look under it. Man, super cool. And if you've ever talked to the guys over at Beast Coast, if you've met them at a show or whatever, had a few guys that have talked to them and said they're just stand-up super nice guys. I've had a chance to talk to them a couple times. Good dudes, you know, trying to do different stuff. I'm a huge fan of their products. So that's a little Hustler hybrid for nest jig. I'm definitely going to be using those some more. And I just noticed that's got like a a purplish tint to it. That's pretty sweet, but going to be throwing those more. I really like them. Okay, staying with that jig look. This is also from uh, the Hookup Tackle. The Carver Jig, this is from ISM. Now this is again, uh, something we don't usually see here. It's one of those products they brought over. Now what's neat about this guy is, take a look at that head there. Turned up head, good looking swim jig profile to it, but check out that hook. See how that moves there? Interesting, huh? Flip that baby over and it's got a screw keeper there. Now I know there's a, a brand that people get off Carl's or whatever, I forget what it's called. Um, I know some people have used it and said they really like it. I forget what it is, if you know, comment down below, but um, something similar to this where it's got the hook here, it's got the keeper here, and this isn't anything new. I've got jigs in my tackle box from when I was a kid that had this exact thing, and I tend to use those more when I was younger, so I didn't get hung up. It was like a Texas rig mixed with a jig, so I could throw it in the, the heavy wood. I wasn't worried about getting hung up with my jig because it had this type of keeper here for my trailer. So I've used these before. These are a little bit more expensive. It was like eight something for one of them. I still wanted to try it, give you guys uh, my thoughts on it. I thought it was just something neat, something different to try, but kind of that cool pivoting head design. It's got the hook attached, but you can screw that trailer on and keep that completely weedless. So we'll see how that does, that Carver swim jig from uh, ISM. All right, I got one top water in here. Uh, I've only got one buzz bait that I use with the trailer on it. 
Um, this one I saw, I figured, you know, why not? Let's get one. It's the, uh, the Boss brand. It's the same brand that I got that did those jigs when I made my own uh, chatter baits, those Boss dock knockers. I really like the Boss stuff. They've got some nice products. So I got a little amphibian, what do they call it? Amphibian buzz bait. So you can see this guy close up. This is a buzz bait, especially made for running a trailer on it. So whether you're running like, you know, a, a horny toad type thing or a, a top toad deal, you could throw a swim bait on here, whatever it is. It's got that screw keeper right there. So you screw that soft plastic on, it's going to stay on there better. I know a lot of just the regular buzz baits don't really have a keeper. So you can't just take the, you know, the skirt off and put some sort of soft plastic on there. You need something to keep it. So this, you can screw it on there. It doesn't matter if you're casting it hard. It's going to keep that soft plastic on for you. So pretty standard buzz bait, nothing uh, insane about it. But I tell you what, that screw keeper helps a ton. And... If you notice the size of that screw keeper, it's not real small and tiny. There you go. You can see the two compared side by side. They're a much larger keeper compared to that smaller one on that swim jig. So we'll see how both of those do. But that uh, that Boss Amphibian Buzz Bait made especially for your soft plastics. I like that. Speaking of soft plastics, let's switch over to a swim bait. This is something a lot of people have asked me to try. The Mega Bass Mag Draft. Never tried one out. I'm trying. I figured this might be a little bit better luck for me. I've been trying the big 8-inch glide baits and stuff. Still no luck. I am a crappy glide bait fisherman, but we're going to keep trying it. This is only a six inch. Uh, it's one and a fourth ounces. So you won't need a big, huge swim bait rod to throw something like this. A regular, you know, heavy type rod would throw something like this with no issue. So now the hook of tackle didn't have much of these left on their site. This is a six inch. They said these go pretty quick, but uh, what is this? White back shad is what they call it. That's the color of that one there. Mega bass mag draft six inch white back shad so we'll see how that baby does maybe i can uh catch a fish on it sticking with those soft plastic swim baits a huddleston i'll take this guys out for you there we go colors on it look awesome very bluegillish looking see it's got that wedge club tail reminiscent of the huddleston swim baits very unique tail very cool look to it what's neat about it is what do you notice no hook on it right well not until you do that so that hook is completely hidden up inside there a weedless hook design I like that. Tied that baby up. I'm not going to have to worry about that getting hooked on wood, you know, thick grass, pads and stuff while I'm fishing from the bank. It's also soft plastic. Bass are starting to spawn here in Iowa, so you know what's going to happen after that. Bass spawn, then the bluegill spawn, and the bass get their revenge on these guys for pestering them while they were spawning. It's only like a little four inch bait, so pretty small, pretty compact. I'm interested to see how that's going to do. Hopefully after the bass spawn, we can catch some fish on that baby. Sticking with that same bluegill team, I saw these. These are new from Savage Gear. I wanted to try one as well. This is a Savage Gear Pulse Tail Bluegill. Four inch again, a little small four inch bluegill. Colors on this thing look amazing. Absolutely great looking colors on it. You can see there, that dude looks awesome. Now it's a little bit harder plastic. You can see it's kind of got that same similar club shaped tail as the Huddleston. This does come pre-rigged and you can see it is weedless as well. So the hook for this one is hidden up here by the fin. And the nice thing about it is once you actually rig it like that, it is good and weedless. You know, I'm pushing out at a decent pace. That hook is down under. So it's not like some of the things I've seen where they put a hook up here and it's not really weedless at all. This does seem to be good and weedless. Now, the only thing I question is the hook. For this not being a very big bait, look at that hook. I mean, it's like a gargantuan shark hook on here. This must be a four and a half or five inch. Look at these two next to each other. This bottom one, the Savage Gear, is four inches compared to that Huddleston, a little bit bigger. So it must be like a four and a half inch, almost five inch on that Huddleston. Colors on them look great. Really excited to throw these. Um, I think something like this, you know, even when the bass are spawning, trying to put those guys in their beds, let's see what it does. Let's see what it does after the spawn. Are they really gonna key in on those bluegill like, you know, we say they do. Let's see a couple soft plastic bluegills. Okay, last up in the box, some line. I wanted to get some new line for my spinning reels. I've got some older stuff out there, but I wanted to try some new things. So. First is the SpiderWire UltraCast. This is an eight carrier braid. Supposed to have good abrasion resistance, supposed to have good castability. I like the you know eight carrier braids a little bit better on my finesse stuff. Uh, the four carriers are a little bit rougher. I don't know, I tend to like something that's a little bit smoother, casts a little bit easier on my finesse setup. So this is just a dark green and you can see how absolute thin that braid is very thin diameter on it. Now the thing with all these is they're all 15 pound, but you'll see that each one has just a slightly different diameter. So the second one I got is the P-Line TCB, which I assume stands for Teflon coated braid. It does talk about being a Teflon surface on it. Never tried it before. I've never tried either of these before. So I was just getting them to check out. This P-Line is quite a bit larger in diameter. Now, you know, when we look at the numbers, not by much, but you can tell just by looking at them, that P-Line is a little bit different diameter. Those are both 15 pound. 
So that's when I talk about braids, you know, not all braids are created equally just because you look at the pound of it. Some braids are smaller diameter, some are a little bit bigger. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Quite a bit bigger difference diameter on there. So we're going to see how that does. P-line, that spider wire. Last, my buddy got some of this and he said he loved it for the color. So they call it flame green. This is the Berkeley X9, the Jordan Lee stuff. I wasn't a fan of the Berkeley Solutions fluorocarbon. So we're going to see how this X9 is. Again, a nine carrier braid. So round, nice and smooth to it. I do like how it feels. Uh, very small diameter again uh, in that bright color. I always use braid to a leader on my spinning stuff. Um, so when you go with that bright color, that's really just to see where your line is. I've got a seven, you know, eight foot leader on there leading down to my lure that's eight, 10 pound fluorocarbon. So the fish can't see it, but that's that Berkeley X9, good and smooth, good small diameter. We're gonna see how that does on a spinning reel. All right, fish and friends, that's gonna do it for today's video. Comment below and let me know what you're the most excited to see. Do you wanna see more on the Scorpion, the Shimano Scorpion MGL, this JDM reel? Is it worth the money? I will be telling you that. We're gonna do a full review in depth on this very soon. Maybe you're more excited to see me use some more of these swim baits, the bigger glide baits and such. Let me know. I'm still putting in work with that. I'm not the best with those, but these, I think we can definitely catch some Iowa fish with these. Maybe you wanna know more about some braided lines. If there's a specific braided line you want me to pick up, let me know. I'm excited to test some of this. So that's gonna do it for tonight's vid. Tonight's subscribe fish and friend shout out goes to Austin Millard. Austin, thank you very much for watching and thank you everybody else that continues to watch and support. Like I said, it means a ton to me. Um, channel's doing far better than I ever thought it could. So, and that's only because of the support of all of you, but that's it. I'm uh, going to go edit this up, get all this stuff put away, but thank you all very much for watching. And until next time.